Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Exodus 39. And what we're going to do is we're going to be reviewing Exodus 31, but in 39, we're going to make the garments. 31 was lay out the garments. And of the blue, heavenly, purple, royalty, and scarlet, blood, they made cloths of service to do service in the holy place. And made the holy garments of Aaron, as the Lord commanded Moses. Okay, so we're going to look at the priesthood and their clothing. Now it says to do service of the service. Revelation 1 says those that are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ are called priests. Now we don't have special clothing in the church age as priests. But we do have a service. So God has given us an armor to wear. So not only am I a priest not called father. But I'm also a service man in the army of Jesus Christ. Because I'm in the service. Anybody saved is that priest and he's called to serve. They realize when you got saved, you were called into an army. And what is our clothing? Ephesians says and describes breastplate, which we see here, a sword, a helmet. We have clothing given to God called armor for being a serviceman. He made the ephod, and that's like one of them old t-shirts. Uh, kind of hard. It had the, the, it clothed the chest and stomach, but it had like straps that went over the shoulders. It's not like the t-shirts today you can buy in the store. Of gold, and this ephod was turned around and put on a pole when Gideon, and made into a flag, and they worshipped it. Sound familiar? And it became a sin to Israel. Gold, blue. Now gold is royalty. Blue again, heavenly, purple, scarlet, and fine twine linen, which Revelation said is the righteousness of the saints. So what you're going to see with the, with the priests is not what we wear as Christians, but boy, the typology is there. And they did beat the gold into thin plates and cut it into wires. <clears throat> Boy, how, how much things have changed over the years? 1491, this says BC, and we're in 2017. And they were able to take copper and gold and things and make it into a wire. And this wire that's spoken here is made as, as thin as a thread to put in the clothing. The gold is used as a thread to work it in the blue and in the purple and in the scarlet and in the fine linen with cunning work. Again, that cunning means professionally done. <clears throat> they made shoulder pieces for it to couple it together by the two edges which is coupled together. The curious girdle. Now you see how the words have been deformed today. You would read that today in 2000. Oh, Curtis, you know, 
you, can they see the girdle? I want to see the girdle. And yet, curious means it's made best. It's made to suit God. It's given 100% girdle of his ephah. So the men, the priests, the males wore, wore girdles. But then we throw the verses in there. A man not to wear what pertains to a woman and a woman not. Listen, the garments of men and women have changed since the Old Testament. Do you not know that the disciples, after Jesus was resurrected and went off to heaven, he said, okay, now grab your purse, your script. You see, you cannot read the Bible Americanized. You got to read the Bible Jewishly, if that's a word. America, forget it. America's going to fall down the tube. It's not ever going to be remembered again. And realize, in the New Earth, if the men and women wear what they wear in the Old Testament, that's going to shock Americans. And the Baptists are going to say, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. you're going to be very shocked to realize what the clothing is. So a courteous girdle of his ephod and was upon it was the same, according to the work thereof of gold, blue, and purple, and scarlet and fine twine linen, as the Lord commanded Moses. And they wrought onyx stones, enclosed in ouches, that's a little setting, of gold graven as signets are graven graven with the names of the children of Israel there were six on one stone and six on the other stone names that took some fine work you imagine take a, a, a small onyx stone and put in six names and he put them on the shoulder plate put them on the shoulders of the ephod so the priest, the high priest, has got a chip on, the sh on his shoulder with the names of the children of Israel on his shoulders. As Jesus Christ will carry the burden of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel, because he is of the children of Israel, John chapter 1. When he suffered and died, he died for the Jewish people, the Jewish individual. And that law that the Pharisees and the scribes had put on those people, he said, listen, those laws are, are, are traditions. They're going beyond what God has written. Are you heavy laden? Come on to me. I'll give you rest. Do you know when the high priest had rest? Now, not the high priest in Jesus' time. Because they didn't believe. The high priest would have rest when Jesus Christ became the high priest and offered his blood. And sat down the right hand of the Father. There's no more carrying these stones. And they should be stones for a memorial to the children of Israel, as the Lord commanded Moses. Now this high priest is to stand out. You know why they wear their little white little collar in the front? So you can, oh, that's a priest. I got to call him father. You know why she wears that gown in the public? Oh, that's a nun. I got to give her respect. They're stealing it from Aaron and his sons. When you saw Aaron and his sons, you would, you were know why. Hey, that is a priest, and those people over there are just regular people. When you came to the tabernacle, when you came to the temple, okay, that's the priest. Okay, that's the one I need. That's just priest there, but that's the high priest. That's the one I need to see. Or that's the priest. That's the one I need to see. And that's what these church pe people do when they wear their things on backwards. It's not just one church. There's other people. <laughs> look at me. I'm a reverend. Look at me. I'm a, you know. It's not look at you no more. It's look at Jesus. And he made a breastplate. We have that as Christians. Of cunning work. Like the work of an ephah. Of gold, blue, and purple, and scarlet, and fine twine linen. You can imagine how beautiful this was. God loves color. How do you know that? You realize that there are fish in the ocean that man cannot go as deep as those fish are, and they have found them to be beautiful. 
and colorful where there's no light? Now, and scientists ask the question, why is that? Who sees it? God does. God says, listen, I feed the ravens. I attend the funeral of the sparrow. Don't I feed the fish? Ever look at the, the pictures that that Hubble comes back and shows us what the outer space looks like? Isn't it beautiful? Without that telescope, without that technology, who would see it? God. The Bible describes Satan was in beauty. Imagine how beautiful Lucifer was. Imagine how Revelation 4 describes that throne as an emerald ring, as an emerald bow. Imagine what the lightnings are going to look out, look like without the curse. It's going to blow our eyeballs out. We've got to get a new body. We've got to get new eyes. It was four square, and they made the breastplate double because it's going to hold the uh, uh, urim and furum. A span was the length thereof, and the span the breadth thereof being doubled. So it has two parts in it with a little opening. And he set four, four rolls of stone. The first was a sardis, a topaz, a carbuncle. And you can look this up on the line. Colors. This is colorful. And this was the first row. Now you remember when we did this in Exodus 31, we went back to Ezekiel 28 and showed you Satan and his colors. There are three places that you see these colors, Satan, before his fallen state. Lucifer, Satan, when he was in the Garden of Eden, had all these stones of color. We see the high priest now is wearing these stones of colors as a breastplate. We see New Jerusalem taken on with all the colors of the walls. Of great pearls are the gates. In verse 11, the second row is emerald. And sapphire and diamond. And the third row of ligur and agate and an amherst. And the fourth row of beryl and onyx. That's tw three of them. There are three onyxes on the shoulders and in the breastplate. And jasper. That's not casper. Jasper. They were enclosed in ouches to settings of gold in their enclosings. And the stones were according to the names of the children of Israel, twelve according to their names, like the engravings of a saint, everyone with their name according to the twelve tribes. Now the onyx stones had six names on the left, six names on the right. We have twelve stones on the breastplate. Each stone carried a name of one of the tribes of Israel. And that Urim and, and Verum was somehow, I can only speculate, because David sought the ephah. He sought the breastplate. The, Lord God, will these people. And I was assume, because it's called Lights and Perfection, that like your game Simon, or you watch that television game and the letters light up, where did they get that from? That these letters will be written up by Lit up by the Urim and the Thermos and spell out the answer. And they made upon the breastplate chains at the ends of the wreathen. That's round. You know what a wreath is. A wreath is an imitation work of the high priest's breastplate. And some mode of idolatry. And go check out the, the religious background of the wreath. You know, the circle and all that. Work of pure gold, not green. And now they're starting to make reefs out of gold and silver. You catch up to the Bible. And they made two ouches of gold. And two ring, two golden rings. Isn't there a lot of rings? I gave you a number the other night. God cares so more about these rings. Than about, than about the first 12 years of the life of Jesus Christ. And a birthday. He's given more about these rings than he's completely told us about what heaven's about. For the nation of Israel, this is what your high priest is supposed to look like. There is no high priest today. 
and uh, verse 16. And they made two ouches of gold and two golden rings and put the two rings in the two ends of the breastplate. So the breastplate had rings to attach these chains. There's something about those rings because each of the articles in the tabernacle had rings to carry. And every man gives his, his bride-to-be a set of rings, engagement and a marriage ring. And in the Bible you find a ring that's called a signet ring. And you assign and seal your name, your, your whatever icon that you had in wax. And you would say that this is sealed by your ring. And the two ends of the two reading chains were fashioned to the two ouches and put them on the shoulder pieces of the ephod before it. And they made two rings of gold and put them on the two ends of the breastplate upon the borders of it, which was on the side of the ephod inward. And they made two other golden rings and put them on the two sides of the ephod underneath toward the fore part of it over against the other, cupping the, thereof above the courteous girdle of the ephod. And they did bind the breastplate by his rings unto the rings of the ephod with a lace of blue that it might be above the courteous girdle of the ephod and that the breastplate might not be loose. From the ephod as the Lord commands. So this item of clothing of the high priest became one piece. And then jigger jagger as he walked. He made a robe of the ephod of woven work of all of blue. And there was a hole in the midst of the robe as a hold of a habergine. It's a poncho kind of robe. Like Jesus wore with a band round about the hole and what it's doing it's here's a hole you slide your head over and what it's doing the extra sewing the hemi is sealing it. you're not gonna rip it's not gonna rip easily a band around the hole that it should not rend like I just said it won't rip and they made upon the hem of the robe pomegranates of blue and purple that's the fruit, and scarlet, and twine linen, linen. And they made bells of pure gold, and put the bells between the pomegranates upon the hem of the robe, round about between the pomegranates. A bell and a pomegranate, a bell and a pomegranate, round about the hem of the robe to minister in, as the Lord commanded Moses. No, there's no rope tying to them. You would hear him jingle as he walked in the most holy place. But then again, who's the imitation of that? Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. How do you like that one? There's one other man that jingles once a year. It's called Santa Claus. Satan Claus. He's got red. He's got white. Imitation Jesus Christ, Antichrist. And they made coats of fine linen of woven work for Aaron and for his sons. And a mitre of fine linen and goodly bonnets. And for, this is for the priest. They wore bonnets of fine linen. And linen breeches. Go look that one up. A fine twine linen. And a girdle. Fine twine linen. Blue and purple and scarlet of needlework handmade as the, Lord, as the Lord commanded Moses. And they made the plate of the holy crown of pure gold and wrote upon it a writing like to the engravings of a signet. This one man wore this, the high priest, holiness to the Lord. That's what every Christian should have in a mark on his life. But Jesus Christ is the only one ever to wear this forever without sin. Holiness to the Lord. And they tied onto it a lace of blue and fastened it on high upon the mitre 
as the Lord commanded Moses. Thus were all the work of the tabernacle, the tent, the congregation finished. They're done. And the children of Israel did according to all that the Lord commanded Moses. So did they. And they brought the tabernacle unto Moses, the tent, and all the furniture, his tatches, his boards, his bars, his pillars, his sockets. Boy, the modern person would hate the Bible today. And the coverings of ram skins dyed red. Look how many times we've, we've read this. And coverings of badger skin and the veil of the covering. The ark of the testimony and the stave thereof and the mercy seat. Now let's turn to Revelation 11, 19. We've got a lot of scripture here. Reference. Revelation 11, 19. It's kind of interesting. Let me move my book out here. It's interrupting. Okay. 11.19. Let me look real quick here. Alright. I am doing this by fair use law. I am instructing so I can use this. Raiders of the Lost Ark, 1981. Steven Spielberg. Harrison Ford. Written by George Lucas of Star Wars. Indian Jones tries to get the Ark of the Covenant, which involves the Nazis, preventing the Nazis to get it so he can get it, so the, so the Nazis, the Germans won't get it, who hate Jews. And what I read was they actually find the Ark, and they prevent, and the Nazis get it, and supposedly they open it up. Now, I didn't watch the movie, so I'm just going by what I read. So I want to look at two scriptures here. Okay? Revelation eleven nineteen. And the temple of God was opened in heaven. Oh, there it is. There's a tabernacle. There's a temple. There's one in heaven. I believe God took Moses into heaven to, to see that. You read in Ezekiel, there's a man measuring. Revelation talks about a man measuring. And I wonder, it doesn't say, but I wonder if Moses was measuring. I don't know. I can't say that. And there was seen in his temple the Ark of the Testimony. So you trying to tell me that the Nazis and Harrison Ford went into glory? By that movie, how many Christians fell for that one? Where is the Ark today? It's in heaven. So if you found uh, the ark in 1981, you are saying you went to heaven by your own works. Now let's check something else here. 2 Kings 25. 2 Kings 25. You've got to watch your movies. 2 Kings 25. You got to heaven by your own works. And we want to start in verse 8. A little bit of reading here. Verse 8. And see where we got to go to. Okay. 25, verse 8, Second King. The fifth month, on the seventh day of the month, which is the 19th year of King Nebuchadnezzar, King of Babylon, came Nebuchadnezzar, King of the guard, a servant of king of Babylon unto Jerusalem. And he burnt the house of the Lord. This is the temple. Solomon built. And the king's house. And all the houses of Jerusalem. Every great man's house burnt he with fire. So the entire city of Jerusalem is burnt. And all the army of the Chaldeans. That were with the captain of the guard. Break down the walls of Jerusalem round about. Now the rest of the people that were left in the city, the fugitives that fell away to the king of Babylon, with the raiment of the multitude, Nebuchadnezzar, the captain of the guard, carried away. Now let's get in verse 12. But the captain of the guard left the poor of the land to be vine dressers and husbandmen. You ready? Here we go. 
the pillars of brass that were in the house of the Lord, and the bases, and the brazen sea, that's the labor, that was in the house of the Lord, did the Chaldeans break in pieces and carried the brass of them to Babylon. The pots, the shovels, the, have, you, have you read that before? The pots, the, sh the shovels, the snuffers? You read that. The spoons, all the vessels of brass wherein they ministered, took they away. And the fire pans and the set and the bowls. Did you read that? You read that. It's mentioned again. Let's see, he read, and such things as were of gold and gold and of silver and silver. The captain of the guard took away. The two pillars, one sea, and the bases which Solomon had made for the house of the Lord, the brass of all the, these vessels was without weight. Um, then he talks about the pillars, verse 18. The captain of the guard took Sariah, the chief priest, and Zephaniah, the second priest. How did they get two priests? It's supposed to be one high priest. When did that happen? And the three keepers of the door. Out of the city they took an officer, was set over the men of war, five men of them, and they were in the king's presence. Where was the ark? The ark's missing. It's not mentioned. Oh, but the spoons, the bowls, and the fire pans. And there's a greater detail this I don't want to read. Where's the ark? It was raptured. Taken up. And we saw in Revelation, it's in heaven. You can't find it. You can't worry about the Nazis going to get it. The only way a Nazi's going to get to heaven is by the blood of Jesus Christ. And you ain't going to do it by killing and slaughtering Jews. I don't know if Harrison Ford is saved. I hope he is. But a guy who lies and calls himself Indiana Jones, that's not his name. So verse 36 of Exodus, the table and all the vessels therein with the showbread. We talked about that. The pure candlestick with the lamps thereof, even with the lamps to be set in order, and all the vessels thereof, and the oil for the light. Let's go to Revelation 1, 12. So you see what we're reading is yet still to come. It ain't Old Testament. It ain't dead history. No way. Revelation 1, 12. 12, I said. You're going to see that temple again if you're a saved Christian. That, 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 that gate's going to open up what we read. You're going to say, oh, there it is. I read about that. I heard it on audio. I heard it on YouTube. I was prepared to see it. And many Christians, oh, what is that? I thought Indiana Jones found it. What did I say? 12. And I turned to see the voice that spanked with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. Now, this is seven of them. All right. Now, let's look at this for a moment. Let's look at this for a moment. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girded about the paps with a... Where do we read that? Oh, okay, girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Fine linen. And white as snow, and his eyes were the flame of fire. The brazen altar. The candlesticks. The incense altar. And his feet like unto fine... Where did you see that word? Brass. And they burned in a furnace. And his voice as the sound of many waters. And we go, you know, it talks more about Jesus Christ. Look at verse 20. And the mystery of the seven stars, which thou sawest in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks, the seven stars are the, are the angels of the seven churches. The seven candlesticks, which thou sawest, are the seven churches. So later on, there are candlesticks right now in glory, not this one. And they represent the light of the churches. 
and we can go further. Okay. Chapter 2. Wait, wait, chapter chapter 2, verse 1. Unto the angel of the church of uh, Ephesus write, These things say to him that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. There it is. There it is. There's the golden candlesticks. Verse 5. Same chapter. Remember therefore, once when thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and remove thy candlestick out of its place. Remember when Sam, Samuel's in the temple, that light goes out? The nation of Israel was sick. Eli was not doing what he was supposed to do. The light went out. In chapter 4, verse 5. Chapter 4, verse 5. We are in glory now. The rapture's happened. And out of the throne. Oh, what's that? What's that? That's got to be the mercy seat, isn't it? Is it surrounded by beasts? Okay. Proceeded lightnings and thunderings, which I would go, ooh, ah, I love that. And voices. And there were seven lamps of fire. Where did you see seven lamps before? In the holy place. Burning before the throne. Before that most holy place, there's a lamp there. And burning before the throne. How would that happen? When Jesus Christ rent that veil into two, that lampstick shone the mercy seat. Look at that. Look at that. Back to Exodus. Scripture with Scripture. Verse 38. And the golden altar. And anointing oil, the sweet incense, sweet, oh, it's great, it's wonderful. And the hangings for the tabernacle door. Let's do Revelation 8.3. Revelation 8.3. I guess it's not so old anymore, is it? As a born-again Bible-believing Christian, if you're going to heaven, you better study this stuff because it's going to be there waiting for you. 8, chapter, I mean, yeah, Revelation 8, 3. There's nothing, no, oh, yeah, the Old Testament is history, yes, granted. But there's also a pathetic, uh, pathetic, pathetic application of Scripture. And there's a doctrinal application. What we're reading about the temple and the tabernacle is going to happen again. It's going to happen in the tribulation. It's going to happen in the millennial. It's going to be happening in the future. And it's happening in heaven. Yeah, let me say eight, three. Watch this one. Another angel came and stood by the altar, having a golden censer. Okay, we've seen the ark, we've seen the, the candlestick, we've seen the mercy seat, we've seen the, the beast. All that we saw in the tabernacle are in heaven. And there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints. Upon the golden altar, that's the incense altar, which is before the throne. There it is. And what is it it says? It says that the incense is the prayer of the saints. And it comes up before God and God says, I like that. Now remember, only a true priest under the blood of Jesus Christ can get into that holy place today. You're not saved and you pray to God and you don't smell it. He rejects it. But as a Christian, you're saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. You offer up those prayers. The Holy Spirit's praying for us. Jesus Christ is praying for us. And God says, that smells good. Verse 39. The brazen altar. Now we read that in Revelation 1, 13 and 18 about that brass, about that fire. Jesus Christ. Our God, Hebrew says, is a consuming fire. 
You better believe Jesus Christ is God. The brazen offer is great of a brass, his staves, and all the vessels and the labor in his foot. The hangings of the court, his pillars, his sockets, the hangings of the court gate, his cords, his pins, and all the vessels of the service of the tabernacle for the tent and the congregation. And a cause of service to do service in the holy place. L look, we're reading it. It's been built. Here it is. It's being presented before Moses. It's in heaven. It's speaking about in the book of Revelation. Oh, I love the book of Revelation. Oh, Pastor, can we do the book of Revelation? Oh, we don't want to do Exodus. That's a boring book. And yet, Revelation and Exodus tie in together. Study to show thyself to prove unto God, a workman that needs not to be shamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Do the service of the holy place, the holy garments of Aaron the priest, and his son's garments to minister in the priest's office, According to all that the Lord commanded Moses. You see what Israel's doing? They are finally doing everything that God's told them to do. And God will be well pleased. Because we'll see fire come down and start that fire in the brazen altar. That's God's say, way of saying the Old Testament, I approve. Now he called down fire upon Aaron's sons to say, I don't approve of that. And Moses did look up, uh, look upon the work, and behold, they had done it as the Lord had commanded them. Had commanded, so hey, excuse me, had commanded even so had they done it, and Moses blessed them. So all the work is done. It's finished. Moses is happy, and God is happy. Israel has done a wonderful thing. And yet, look how, we, how we've gone through the scriptures. How wonderful this tabernacle study is. It's something of great importance.